Hey everybody, it's Matt from nsickness.org. Today I'm going to be talking about my battle with Dientamoeba fragilis. This is a protozoa in the same family as malaria. It caused me a number of health issues and uh, you should be aware of it if you're dealing with health problems because it could be contributing to your issues as well. In this video I'm going to go over how I got sick, kind of tra what everything that transpired, how we initially thought it was SIBO or Canada and later found out it was Dientamoeba fragilis how we found out and came to the realization that it was Dientamoeba fragilis, um, how the Dientamoeba fragilis can form cysts in the biliary duct and liver, and this can uh, cause it to be able to evade a lot of the lab tests and be able to cause you a lot of immune issues, how you must flush the liver, stabilize the gut, and repeat over and over to be able to get rid of this type of infection, how immunomodulation is the absolute key to being able to progress with your health and get better and better, and how protozoans may be the primary cause of most gut issues. The only reason that people don't talk about them enough is because they can't be isolated in labs as easily. So let's start off, okay? Number one, how we got sick. So uh, when I was younger, I was on antibiotics for about four or five years every single day for my acne. It was tetracycline, eventually minocycline, and uh, that really wiped out my gut microbiome, okay? In addition, Tetracycline and doxycycline, that family of antibiotics, is the family of antibiotics that's responsible for killing dientamoeba fragilis. That's the one that they use for dientamoeba fragilis if they, if they uh, are trying to target it. So I ended up with this super parasitic infection that was resistant to uh, the medication that could be used for it. And uh, I got extremely, extremely sick. Now, how did I actually get the parasite? It could be nearly anything. I mean, there's food from all over the world that we're eating nowadays. Um, but I used to play in a, in a creek um, that had temporarily or it, uh, intermittently had sewage that was, that was dumped into it. So who knows, you know, if I was, you know, got it from that sewage creek or whatever. But the, regard, the point being is I got really, really sick. 70, 80 pounds I lost. I had rashes over my body. I was reacting to all but six different foods. Um, I had pain under my rib cage, you know, I, it was just the symptoms, I could go on a, a whole video just about my symptoms, but, um, so I probably got sick from some exposure to it, um, either in the water system, um, you know, in the sewage creek or uh, in the food because it's trans transferred through um, exposure to uh, feces that are contaminated with it, so it could have been in, in food because they use feces to be able to uh, use it as like a, as a manure, um, but then also it could have been in the sewage creek. So initially we thought it was SIBO or Candida. Uh, we thought that it was SIBO because when we did the stool analysis, it came up with seven different bacterial infections, Candida through the roof, but we did not find any Dientamoeba fragilis and we didn't find any parasite. But the doctor, you know, was a little bit curious because he said, why would you have all these bacterial infections, all this? if you didn't have something else going on behind the scenes that was contributing it. He wasn't a big believer that the bacteria and the fungal infections could make me as sick as I was, okay? Uh, how we finally found Dientamoeba fragilis was, uh, I had a theory that, that this infection was in my liver because I, at, after years and years of research, the one thing that matched my symptoms the most was um, something called liver uh, amoebiasis or amoeba in the liver, right? Uh, and this is a certain type of parasite that lodges its way in your liver and causes you a number of symptoms. So I found these, uh, these references about the symptoms related to uh, liver parasites and thought it sounded exactly like me. So what I did was I had a, did a liver flush the night before um, the actual stool analysis, collected the stool the next day, brought it to the lab, came back through the roof, diatomoeba fragilis, higher than it, any of the other levels, four plus, the highest rating, right? But we had done three stool analysis before that and did not find it at all. So it made me realize, what the heck is going on here, right? Why would I find a parasite right after a liver flush and not the other three times? Well, it's obvious that the, that the infection was burrowing in my liver and my biliary duct, okay? Um, and dientamoeba fragilis forms cysts. So it can form cysts in various parts of the body. But what I realized is that the liver gallbladder area seems to be their, its favorite area. Um, it's protected from the immune response um, much better there. There's much smaller vessels and capillaries and whatnot in there. Um, and it can evade the immune response 
be able to lay eggs, do the things that it does, and replicate um, in a much safer environment, right? And it surrounds itself with uh, fats. That's how it protects itself from the immune response. And in the biliary duct, um, that is going to be where a lot of your excess fat and cholesterol and liver, or excess fat and cholesterol build up, okay? So, Dintamibifragilis, I realized it was in the liver, the biliary duct. The only way I found that out was by doing the liver flush the night before. The stool analysis came back through the roof, so obviously there was something going on in my liver gallbladder area. So I realized that for me to get better, I needed to flush that liver and then stabilize my gut and flush that liver, etc. Um, I realized that when I flushed my liver the first time using the Halder-Clark protocol, that my environmental sensitivities got much, much better. I felt lighter. I felt better. Um, I felt just a sense of relief. Digestion had improved. Um, and it was for about three or four days. It was like really significant change in symptoms, and then it started to come back again, you know. Um, so I realized that flushing out the infection from my liver gallbladder into my stomach was, into my stomach and out of me was essential, but the problem is when it's in your liver and gallbladder, it has to go through your stomach to get out of you. And during the process of going through your stomach, it can cause a lot of disruption in the gut microbiome, your bacteria levels, your fungal levels, etc. So the way that I got rid of it was I had to flush the liver, usually once every couple months, and then stabilize the stomach, usually with the raw colostrum, the bifidobacterium, the propolis, those things. And then I had to do another flush and keep repeating over and over again until I could flush out the cysts in the pockets of infection that were in the liver, bilary tract into my stomach, get those out of there, get the infection out of the liver and gallbladder because that was causing me so much immune sensitivity. I was reacting to all but six different foods. I was reacting to smells, I was getting physical muscle pains just from smelling things. Um, it was really, really bad. So the flushing the liver, then stabilizing the gut, and then flushing the liver, stabilizing the gut back and forth, that's what I did over and over again. I did about 20 different, 20 liver flushes, you know? Um, and uh, that was, I felt absolutely critical for me to get better. Um, you know, if without doing the liver flushes, I feel like the infection could have just hid there. I could have stabilized my gut all I wanted. But if I still had a backed up liver gallbladder and the infection was there, I would have still have these reactions, still have this compromised ability to detoxify. I would have still had a lot of problems that I don't have now today. So that is absolutely key. Immunomodulation was the real key to getting over this condition though, okay? Um, I had to remove all the foods I was sensitive to, the meat, uh, which was contributing to the parasitic infection, um, contributing to the backup in the liver, the gallbladder, giving the animal fats that the parasite needed to evade the immune system. The parasites use the animal fats as a protective coating to evade the immune system. That's how they form their quote unquote biofilms. Though it's not technically a biofilm, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, I think it's called like a lipophilic barrier or something like that, which is a, a barrier made by fat. So the immune system thinks it's just fat, not actually a parasite. <laughs> the problem with diatomic fragilis is that it makes your immune system go haywire. It makes you have reactions to all kinds of stuff that you weren't having before. All kinds of food allergies and things like that. And unless you get rid of those sensitivities and those food reactions, the parasite will thrive in your body, right? So you had, I had to remove the food sensitivities. I had to take only supplements which were natural, that were mast cell modulators that calmed down the immune system. Had to make sure that everything I did didn't trigger the immune system. Because by triggering the immune system, I then would in, ess in essence tell the pathogen or the parasite, hey, it's time to grow, right? The immune system being overactive um, led to certain signals in the body that the parasite would be able to recognize, and the parasite would then replicate um, uncontrollably, and I would have, it would have no repercussions in doing so, because the immune system was distracted by fighting foods and fighting these other allergens uh, rather than the parasite itself. So immune modulation was the absolute key. Focusing on mast cell modulation, focusing on taking only supplements which were natural, that were mast cell modulators, that were not hard in the liver, not hard in the stomach, that was absolutely key. Um, you know, colostrum, raw colostrum, Japanese knotweed, B propolis, uh, various other ones like, uh, you know, apigenin, all kind of mast cell modulators, these were fundamental to my recovery. In fact, the most important part of my entire recovery was keeping the immune system calm. That allowed the immune system to start to get its balance back, get rid of the existing infections, um, and, and really suppress the, the, the parasite and keep the parasite from in, in its dormant or hidden places, not in an active replicating state. What people don't realize is that protozoans actually cause most gut issues. 
if you have chronic gut issues, you're most likely dealing with a parasite that is, that is contributing. Most people think that it's bacteria or fungus, but in most cases, there's a parasite that's contributing to the bacterial or fungal issue. And unless you actually deal with the bacterial and fungal issues first, you can't get to the parasite, but, um, but you gotta understand that the parasite still is the origin of the bacterial fungal issues, you know? Um, and you have to address the bacterial and fungal issues. In my, in my experience, the best thing was the, the raw colostrum, definitely. I'd say the propolis, the bifidobacterium were also really helpful, but the colostrum is the absolute game changer. And uh, just from drinking that raw colostrum, I gained 40 pounds back within three, four months. And uh, the reactions were all but gone, um, or they were a lot more delayed, just put it that way. And the reactions I was having within minutes were now happening within hours, and uh, I was able to recover a lot more. So it's key to understand protozoans, protozoans are actually the root cause of most gut issues. IBS, Crohn's, you know, um, ulcerative colitis, chronic health, chronic autoimmune issues, you know, SIBO, et cetera, right? So let me summarize a few points. Like when, how I got sick, probably got sick from uh, some type of exposure in a food or in the sewage creek I was playing in. Uh, initially thought it was SIBO in Canada, but in fact it was this parasite that was hidden beneath the surface. We could not find this parasite in all the tests we did until I did a liver flush the night before, a stool analysis, then it showed up through the roof, so it made it obvious to me that there was forming cysts in the biliary duct and liver and uh, I had to go ahead and flush, stabilize the gut, flush, stabilize the gut, go through that process over and over again. Did about 20 flushes. By the time I had done, you know, 10 plus flushes, my health was night and day versus where it was when I started. Um, granted, I was doing the colostrum, other things as well, but, um, but the flushes were absolutely key to get rid of the, the burrowed or the cyst, um, the burrowed infection, the cysts that were in that area. Immunomodulation was, was actually the most important part, I would say. Um, of everything, even though this was key. If I didn't, if I kept taking things that aggravated the immune system, my symptoms of parasitic issues would just get worse, right? So I had to learn how to take only things that calm down the mast cells, calm down the immune system, that are not hard in the gut, that are not synthetic, that are naturally derived, etc. That was absolute key. And what you need to understand, if you have gut issues, you're dealing with chronic health issues, it could be a protozoan infection that's dealing, that's causing this, you know? Common protozoans, diantamoeba fragilis, entamoeba histolica, giardia lambia, etc. These are ones that are very tough to isolate on labs, um, that if you get lucky, you could find them on labs and understand what the true root cause is of your issues. Uh, but it doesn't change the fact that you still need to calm down the inflammation and you need to flush out the cysts to be able to get better, you know? And some of this involves going through uh, pockets of infection, which temporarily make you feel like you're going through a cleansing effect. So, I hope this helped. You know, I wanted to give you a little background on diantamoeba fragilis, what it, how it affected my health. If you're dealing with chronic stomach issues, it could be affecting your health as well. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out on nsickness.org, or you can put some questions in the comments. I'm happy to respond. Um, and please note, this is for educational purposes only. This is not meant to be medical advice. It should not be misconstrued in any way, shape, or form to be so. And uh, thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed.